May I request Sri Ashok Kumar to kindly be here for the felicitation. Sir, please. Participants, ladies and gentlemen, beloved students. It gives me great pleasure to be here today for the Golden Jubilee celebration of the Indian Institute of Foreign Trade. This is an occasion to recognize the enormous intellectual contribution made by the Institute in foreign trade and international business. I have fond memories of my association with the Institute during my two tenures as the Commerce Minister. During one of my visits to the Institutes in 1994, I remember releasing a book titled Trading Services, The Urbi Around and After. I'm told that this book continues to be an important reference for understanding the nuances of the trade in services. As the Commerce Minister, I had the privilege to contribute to the negotiations that led to the formation of the World Trade Organization in January 1995. So, the final agreement was signed in April 1994. The IIFT since its inception in 1963 has been at the forefront of research and capacity building in international trade. This institute has provided able support to the government in responding to the challenges faced by our trade and industry from the very beginning. The country's external sector was stressed on several occasions. 
in the mid 60s the foreign exchange position became unstable due to increased food imports necessitated by drought oil prices shock of 1973-74 and 79-80 had similar strength or foreign exchange results. The compound average growth rate of our exports during 91-92 to 2000-2001 was 10.7%. This has increased to 19.1% during the period 2001-2 to 2012-13. India is today the world's largest rice exporters and second largest wheat exporters. While we must be proud of our performance in commodity exports, there is a need to monitor and exercise caution. We must ensure the availability of enough food in the country at all times. Every citizen should have access to affordable food and it is not easy to feed 1.2 billion plus population. Higher export growth has contributed to an improved economic performance in the last decade. The average annual growth rate during the last 10 years has a healthy 7.9%. The recovery of India's economy from the impact of 2008 global crisis was much stronger than initially believed. During 2019 and 2010 11, India's economy grew by 8.6% and 9.3% respectively, though the growth rates earlier estimated for these years were much lower, particularly in the context of 7.6% GDP growth in 2008-9. The ongoing global financial crisis has decelerated our economic growth in the last two years. The GDP growth in 2012-13 has been estimated at a <coughs> muted 5%, but I am confident that we will bounce back. Ladies and gentlemen, the increased integration of our economy with that of the world calls for managing our economy from the risk of any global financial crisis. We have diversified our export market by focusing on countries in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. These geographies accounted for two-thirds of our exports in 2012-13. Slowdown of the global economy has impacted our external sector, but due to the market diversification strategy, we have been able to mitigate the impact considerably. Matter of concern is the current account deficit which at 5.4% of GDP during the period April to December 2012 is not acceptable. Though we have managed this deficit through capital flow, we have to increase our exports to bring it to the sustainable level. A strong revival of the global economy is expected in 2014, at a time when global demand is yet to firm up there is a need to strengthen our export industry. Our efforts have for a long time to build the competitiveness of our export sector, to give greater trust to export promotion. Over 158 special economic zones have been set up. The export <coughs> promotion capital goods scheme has enabled exporters to import machinery and equipment for producing quality goods for export. We have taken a proactive stance at forging trade and economic partnership with several economy and trading blocks. Comprehensive economic partnership agreements have been entered into with Singapore, South Korea, Japan, Malaysia. Such an agreement has recently been concluded with ASEAN. Similar agreements are being negotiated with India's prominent trading partners like the European Union. Increased trade liberalization and economic cooperation will not count much 
only is the result in tangible benefits for our people. Hence, trust should also be placed on meeting other objectives like employment generation and regional development. Our export sector should be able to drive the socio-economic development of our country. Over the years, these institutions, IIFT, has broadened the academic framework by providing management education and PhD courses. Its endeavor should not only be to productive success to produce successful managers, business leaders, and academic thinkers, but also to prepare them as socially conscious citizens who have the capacity and willingness to respond and contribute to our social needs. I am confident that IIFT will continue to impart relevant training and undertake intellectually sound research in the area of foreign trade and international business. I wish the Institute all success for the future. Thank you.